calmly reiterated his support for small cap stocks today. According to this article, you should purchase IWM and hold off until the next year. By then, you ought to be content with your decision. Given that NVIDIA's value has increased by 5%, why are you behaving that way now? Nevertheless, there is cause for concern as large tech company stock values have recently increased. The value of companies such as Apple, Google, and others has increased by 1% to 2% in the recent past. NVIDIA's valuation has increased by 5.1%, a significant difference from Microsoft's 0.5% increase. The NASDAQ is outperforming the SP500 for the first time in nearly 30 years. That goes beyond the era of dot-coms. According to Zine Hedge, the 10 priciest U.S. equities account for 75% of the market value. This is not logical. This is the lowest free cash flow return for the SP500 tech since March 2002. Taking chances and trading in this market makes little sense, especially given the current state of pricing. Right present, the correlation between SP500 stocks is the lowest it has ever been. According to Bank of America, it's approaching a figure not seen in nearly two decades. This is the lowest the SP500 equal weight measure has been since 2008. Hedge funds and major players swiftly return to net short positions in SP500 futures. Right now, Ryan Dietrich is penning blog entries regarding X. In his opinion, our market is performing fairly well. This year, value has decreased 5.5% from the SP500's peak to its lowest point. It's been less often lately. This indicates that there will be a greater drop this year. This occurrence has the lowest probability of occurring in an election year since 1972 at 5.1%. Since 1950, the average during election years has been 13.1%. During election years, the months of July through September are crucial. November is generally a quiet month. You never know what policies will be implemented or how they might impact your finances prior to an election. Since both candidates have served as president before, we can anticipate no significant changes. Although I don't think the markets will fall, I am prepared for a significant decline or maybe a catastrophe. Click on the feed to learn more about the topic. Bowman in a speech earlier today, Bowman expressed his belief that interest rates will not decrease in 2024. The fact that her cuts wouldn't occur until 2025 surprised me. Given the lack of signs of decreasing inflation, Bowman said he might yet raise rates. According to Leon X, the Federal Reserve will lower interest rates two months later than anticipated, placing them effectively behind the curve. Federal Reserve today, according to Bowman, gives us two solid inflation figures. It is anticipated that the June edition will be as outstanding. Bowman is still considering hiking interest rates, despite the fact that the unemployment rate has crossed a critical threshold that often signals a sharp increase in rates. The unemployment rate will rise from 3.4% to 4%, as it has historically done, if it increases by 0.6% from its lowest position. There are moments when the number of jobless people rises swiftly. There are several indicators of a recession, including the overall health of the economy and the confidence that firms and customers have in one another. Over the previous five weeks, there has been a consistent increase in the quantity of initial claims for unemployment benefits. The Federal Reserve is now considering raising interest rates. Why does this market make me feel bad? Observe the actions of the Federal Reserve. FedEx will provide economic data and financial statistics today. The NVIDIA-affiliated business Micron is expected to disclose its best-ever earnings report after the market closes tomorrow. Workers at General Mills get paid in the morning. In a year, the value of its stock has increased three times. This week, in addition to Nike and BlackBerry, Jeff, Levis, Walgreens, and Walgreens will also be releasing their financial reports. The number of shares trading above their 50-day moving average is the primary metric I use to assess the state of the market. 3.62% of stocks dropped below the 50-day moving average today. At these levels, over 60% of equities experienced a decline. There are currently just 39.8% of equities that are higher than their 50-day moving average. The SP500 dropped 7 or 8% throughout the spring. You are now just 1% away from reaching the all-time high after there has been a 1% decline. This drop is quite tiny. This year's show is smaller than normal. Big tech firms face a great deal of difficulty during earnings season because of the enormous expectations that are created. Any inability to achieve those objectives is detrimental to business. People's excitement about what's to come has caused Apple's share price to rise above $210. Despite the fact that the company is not increasing, its value is still the same. 
To help you understand what you might be concerned about with this incredible growth stock, it is not good news that Canada's real year-over-year -year inflation rate of 2.9% is higher than the 2.6% predicted rate. The rate varied from month to month by 0.6%, which was significantly more than anticipated. Things in this story have gotten significantly worse due to the Canadian Central Bank's new low interest rates. Furthermore, the information was untrustworthy. Rather than the anticipated minus 0.4, the Chicago Fed National Activity Index came out to be 0.18. The outcome was far better than anticipated. In the SP case chiller, monthly housing prices increased by 1.4% more than anticipated. A 1.1% rate that is greater than anticipated is not good. Instead of the 6.8% you had anticipated, the actual increase rate from year to year was 7.2%. We have unfavorable information. The consumer trust in the CB came in at 100.4 instead of 100, which was not what some had anticipated. Does the fact that it is still experiencing a significant drop matter? The Richmond Fed Manufacturing Index was minus 10 when confidence was at 3. That figure is appalling. The Richmond Fed's industrial exports only attained a value of 9, falling short of the expected value of 13. That figure is appalling. Richmond's Fed Services Index was minus 1 indicating a poor result and not what was anticipated. The markets are pleased with the low figure. The real value of the Dallas Fed Services Index was greater than you anticipated, at 4.1, as opposed to the minus 10 you had anticipated. The services division of the Dallas Federal Reserve Bank turned a profit of 1.9, not the 8 you had in mind. That indicates that growth has halted globally. You have very little to look forward to in the morning. The May new home sales and the month-over-month -month sales will be released to the public tomorrow at 10 a.m. The findings of the bank stress test will be released to the public at 4.30 p.m. The FDIC issued a warning today regarding 63 more risky banks in light of the $517 billion in unrealized losses that the U.S. banking industry has experienced. This might make tomorrow a very interesting day. Currently leading the market is NVIDIA. A decline in NVIDIA would obviously impact the market overall, causing the market to decline. The stock market would prefer to maintain NVIDIA stock at overbought or severely overbought levels rather than at balanced or dropping levels, despite the company's increasing worth. At NVIDIA, things are still disorganized and unclear. Financial journalist Gaynan Bijeri is employed by both Bloomberg and The Wall Street Journal. He discusses markets and money. She is making her way here. Tech businesses have been the subject of interactive brokers' most recent deals. SMCI ranks third. Tesla ranks second and NVIDIA ranks first in BFA's bull and bear sign. AMD comes in fourth place and Micron comes in fifth. Of the six categories, four remain strong and the value has increased from 6.0 to 6.1. Though it provides a solid picture of the market, I appreciate CNN's measure of greed and fear, which is currently displaying worry and is at its lowest position in months. The fewest are in the spring. It is 39 that is the solution. Since its peak, the SP500 has decreased by about 1%. The Fear and Greed Index for CNN is 39, indicating a high level of concern among the public. It's the fastest market takeover I've ever witnessed. In Michigan, there are currently 22 persons looking to purchase a property, lowest level since prior to the 1980s. The tags indicate what a fantastic performance it was. Sven Hendrick is speaking about X at this time. The Federal Reserve announced today that prices will drop by 3,500 during the course of the summer. The 12 put-to-call rates on Friday indicate that there are still negative option trading. For the SP500 SPY ETF as of Friday, there are 12 times as many put options as call options. 92.15% of open positions are put, while 7.85% of positions are call. Out of the 32 deals that were made today, totaling a total of $5.5 million, only 21% were completed. At $115,000, the July 19, 425 put looks like a horrible value. By mid-July, it is estimated that the S&P might have lost 22%, or $155,000, of its total assets. According to a recent AI study, 44.4% of investors have a favorable opinion, 33.1% are indifferent, and 22.5% have an unfavorable opinion. Today, the yield on a 10-year bond decreased by almost one basis point. There won't be a movement of more than 46 basis points in the yield curves for the 10-year and 2-year notes.